How bad are your eyes? Bad, real bad. I once mistook a stranger's two-year-old child for a small, adorable dog. Oh, hi, I'm Stella and welcome to 30 Books. And you have busted me reading an essay, I Don't Need Them to See Through You by Jessica Knight from the book Growing Up Disabled in Australia, edited by Carly Findlay. And I was reading from that because this is the book I am reviewing this time round, jumping straight into it. Carly Findlay is a writer, disability activist and spokesperson, or speaker I should say. Now the Growing Up Disabled in Australia joins the growing list from Black Ink, the Growing Up series. So there was Growing Up Asian in Australia, Growing Up African in Australia, Growing Up Aboriginal in Australia and Growing Up Disabled in Australia. And it is going gangbusters and rightfully so. This is an anthology of around 40 writers and their experiences of disability or growing up with disability, although some people acquired a disability later in life. So why I hear? One in five Australians are said to be or identify as disabled, which is about 20% of the population, yet they there's an underrepresentation of disabled people in the media and sort of in our day-to-day -day lives. So when most of us think of disability, we probably think of um, visible disability. But within that, within disability, there are a range of other disabilities. So this book is part way in addressing this and Carly Finlay has done an amazing job so I'll let her speak here. This anthology shows the diversity of disability not just in terms of impairments but also experiences. I took an intersectional approach when selecting the work. The people in this book are disabled, chronically ill, mentally ill and neurodiverse and inhabit the city, regional and rural regions and Aboriginal communities. And there's also age ranges as well. Like most people I would say would be over 18, but that isn't to say that they, they don't talk about when they were younger. Most are essays, a couple of interviews, some poetry and a rather gorgeous, um, I think you'd call it like a graphic comic as such. It is beautiful, the writing is spectacular, so diverse. I've got a couple of favourites in here, actually they're probably all my favourites. Um, of course I lean towards uh, people who are blind or, uh, or have low vision, as was the case with Jessica's piece, I don't need them to see through you, which is about how she doesn't need her glasses to see what an asshole you are. These are, they're, they're just people's experiences and most people with disability, what, like the disability of course is the issue, but the main issue, what compounds it is the barriers they face. And maybe some of the barriers they face are is attitudinal barriers and not their attitudes, but rather able-bodied people attitudes. So fantastic book to get an insight into that most people with a disability, they just want to live their lives. They don't want to be uh, an inspiration. They don't want to be told that they are brave merely for going to the shop and living their lives. They want access to everything that we, that able-bodied people have access to. There's a beautiful essay in here by Emma D. Bernardo, Umbrellas in the Rain. Now this particular essay I think is, oh, it's such a treasure in that we have been allowed into it. So to me this essay very much is from one disabled person to another. My advice to young people who are growing up disabled is to get ready for resilience. 
I grew up for the most part as an able-bodied person. Somewhere around the age of 15, I started experiencing severe period pain. More than a decade later, I'm a woman in her late 20s with a condition and a list of unexplained symptoms longer than the scrolling text at the start of a Star Wars movie. As a maladjusted youth, I had to forego the rites of passage, parties, partners and periods. So it's those really small things and a lot of young people talk about they can't go to parties, they can't just do the ordinary things. This book is also a celebration of their disability. You know, they're, 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 people are just living their lives and often getting the diagnosis, especially with neurodiverse people, is in a way liberating. Of course, there are barriers and things that may come up along the way, but if you have a cheer squad or support crew of even just one other person, then take advantage of it and give yourself the opportunity to surprise yourself. So why not be part of that cheer squad? Go out and get Growing Up Disabled in Australia, edited by Carly Findlay, out by Black Ink. This was a review copy. I read it really quickly, most of the essays really quickly. I found the entire book illuminating, ultimately uplifting and really moved by it. Moved and determined to do a little better. Able to people in the community, particularly disabled writers. So that is your book for this time round and I'll see you next time on 30 Books.